understand him with this thick accent, then he's going to, I know, contribute to this process. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask Rudy Yockham to make his way up here to the, uh, uh, to the uh, chairman's, to the, to the captain's chair. And, um, and I know Ralph Norman had a comment. I'd like Mr. Norman to make a quick comment of, um, uh, as we set up for um, Mr. Rouser's testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, I would just say that there's nothing more important than getting prior to prioritization, like Carlos said. And every dollar up here has got an advocate, and it's tough to get weaned from things it shouldn't have been. So, David, thank you for, for uh, your comments to be, and appreciate your involvement. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Norman. With that, Mr. Rouser, welcome, and thank you for your uh, for your ideas and comments. The floor is yours. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Bull, uh, for holding today's hearing on how Congress can create a better budget process to help address the current state of spending in this country, including holding this institution better accountable for its actions that increase the deficit and the debt. So I'd like to suggest three ideas for the committee's consideration, and I'll be candid and say that these are just top of the head ideas, that, but I do think they will help lend to a uh, constructed debate. Number one, a change to the country's fiscal calendar. Number two, holding CBO more accountable. And number three, an accountability mechanism for lawmakers on votes of major spending that increases our deficit and national debt. So first, I believe we should consider modifying our fiscal calendar to February 1 to January 31. According to the Federal Times, starting in 1842, the fiscal calendar was July 1 to June 30. It was later changed to the current October 1 to September 30 fiscal year in 1977. Ironically, from what I've read, both changes to the calendar were intended to provide Congress with more time to pass appropriations legislation to avoid continuing <laughs> resolutions. Our current fiscal calendar and the executive branch's inability to effectively deliver the president's budget proposal to Congress on time are not conducive to the current fiscal year structure. Often the president's budget is not delivered until March or April. The House and Senate then have three to four months to agree on top line spending, pass their respective bills through each chamber and begin the conference process and, and just shortly thereafter. It's a system, quite frankly, set up for failure. Consequently, we often come back from the August recess and have to pass a CR, many times multiple CRs, which then lead to a bloated end of the year omnibus and, or several bloated minibuses as we call them. It can also lead to a very long and damaging uh, long-term CR. So I recommend a February 1 to January 31 fiscal year. It allows the president to de deliver a budget on the current schedule, gives the House and Senate the calendar year to pass their own bills with the conference report to, vote to be voted on following the holidays. My second suggestion would shift Congress from complete rel reliance upon the CBO in order to better establish a better projection of what legislation will or will not, not cost the U.S. Treasury. How many times have we seen projections that proved to be way off the mark once the law was in place? And let me put it this way, if we each had a GPS that more often than not provided incorrect directions, we would toss it immediately. But let me be clear, the intention of this idea is not to dismantle the CBO, but it, the intention is to state that perhaps we need other instruments for which we can evaluate the CBO and improve it. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm gonna uh, slip down here to the third suggestion, which I think is probably the most important. I suggest we have a mechanism of accountability for votes we cast that increase the deficit and debt. For every vote that scores an increase in annual spending over 20 billion, 200 billion over a 10 year window, and or converts discretionary spending to mandatory spending should require a, su a subsequent vote of acknowledgement that by enacting such legislation, spending will add to the debt requiring that the debt limit will have to increase. If a subsequent vote of acknowledge Acknowledgement is required by the House following the passage of bills that add to the deficit and debt, which by the way could be conducted the same as approved in the Congressional Journal. Members would further establish a more transparent public record of our acknowledgement that a bill will result in additional deficits and debt. Or conversely, the member could vote no and explain in the record why such member either believes the scoring is wrong or the increase to the deficit and debt is necessary, such as in the case of war or other national emergency. So those are just a few suggestions. I yield back, I appreciate the opportunity to share. Thank you, Mr. Rouser. We appreciate your time today and thank you for coming. The chair will now recognize Mr. Swikert. Mr. Swikert.